gets exciting, everybody. This is Bob Pomelo here again at doyourselftips.info. And now I'm putting stain. I've, uh, this is Minwax stain, oil based stain. And um, I'm putting it on with a small uh, brush. And the technique is, is I don't wipe it off, I just put it just enough because the wood is dry enough that it's sucking it right in. So I'm using a two inch tapered brush and I'm using uh, a stain, it's uh, Puritan Pine and uh, Golden Oak. I mixed it. I want a little darker color in the Golden Oak, but not as dark as the Puritan Pine. So by mixing them, it gave me the best of both worlds. So what I do is, all I'm doing is I'm putting it on, not too thick because you don't want it watery, it'll, it'll mark. You want it, the wood to absorb the stain. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm getting the wood to absorb the stain, keeping it spread out. Try not to go over and over it again because you'll put too much stain down. You can see how beautiful it's coming out because the wood has been waiting to be finished. All the wood has been sanded, palm sanded, with a palm sander, start with a belt sander, finish it up with a palm sander. And any marks, eraser marks I made, it's been erased out, thoroughly swept. And I've got a fan blowing up above me just to keep the air circulating. It is, uh, it is winter right now, so I can't open up any windows or doors, unfortunately. So I've got to keep the air flowing. And I'll do this in two steps. I'll put the stain on and then I'll put the polyurethane on. Needs a couple of coats of that. protect uh, the wood itself from wear and tear. Usually start and I cut in on the edges. Just take on a little time here. And then I'll meet in the middle. See the wood is really looking nice because it's uh, the steam is really absorbing just right. And this stain is bringing out the real beauty of the, the grain in this red oak. Well, that's basically the technique of staining. A lot of people let it think you brush it off, wipe it off, but it's a waste of time. Just try not to heat, heat it on too thick, and the wood will do the rest. Wood will, wood will, the wood will absorb it. Just don't want to put too much. Too much is bad. And when you're standing, you want to keep working your stain because you'll get overlap marks. I don't know if you've ever done staining, especially on a house on the outside. The overlap marks are horrific. You don't keep moving your product on the on the wood. So, uh, you get those overlap marks, and it's terrible. Just keep moving your stain. If you're running short of time and you have to come back, it's best to cut, leave a, a hole, not touch the, the next area whatsoever. And if you do, you want to complete the whole step that you're working on before you stop. That way you don't have any overlap marks and you won't have it uh, looking terrible on the Well, stay tuned. We'll be uh, putting the poly on it next, and I'll see you then.
So, here we are. I'm putting the first coat on the um, steps. It's uh, the water-based polyurethane. I actually, I turned, I ended up staining this with Minwax oil base. And as I mentioned before, but then I'm using this um, product that um, is water-based, dries in two hours. I put a coat uh, on this morning and uh, now it's ready to be sanded lightly. And then a new, uh, a second coat. They recommend at least two coats anyway. So that's what I plan on doing here. But you can see the transition from the carpet to this beautiful oak steps. And this is native wood that I had milled, that I cut and uh, sanded and uh, installed in this, uh, my house. And um, the product that I got, I'm going to show you the product. It's actually this stuff here. It's called uh, Minwax Water-Based Procrylic. It's a protective finish. What I like about it is that it doesn't stink up the whole house and it dries very quick and it's water cleanup. You can get it in gloss, semi-gloss. I found that one quart was plenty to do two coats uh, easily, maybe even three. So this is what I used so that you, if you want to get the same results, professional results I'm getting, this is what I recommend. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the sanding techniques uh, that I'm using and uh, then we'll go for the last coat and the finished product. with the uh, the palm sander I just use this one of these sanding sponges or I can use a, just a small piece of sandpaper I just go up into the corners a little bit I also do the face of the tread as well with the sanding block because the palm sander will end up it'll, uh, it'll rip off the sandpaper on it uh, very easily so I was still away from edging with it. It's only a light sanding anyway. You just want to just roughen the surface up for the second coat to adhere to, much like you know painting or any other uh, product that you put on. So it's, the prep is everything. You spend a little bit of time on the prep, it'll pay for itself in dividends. Okay, so we're putting on the top coat. We're done sanding, and now we're putting on the top coat. So I'll just give you a little uh, how I'm doing it. You can see it's uh, it dries really quick. It's given a nice finish. You can see where I've sanded in here, in this section of the steps. And then up here is where the second coat's going on. And this is a semi-gloss, it's really beautiful. So, I'm using my uh, two-inch tapered brush with a, uh, a wide bucket that allows me to, um, easy, act, easy to work with, just dip the brush in and out. And uh, I'll show you the, what I'm doing here.
a little bit and uh, it's milky white. So you gotta really watch it. It's not like you can really uh, set keep track of where you're brushing, just putting it on. And you don't want to overdo it too thick because it'll run. And uh, your finish will be uh, hazy looking. So the semi-gloss, the gloss look that you want. So I just go up and I cut in on the edges. That's where the tapered brush is uh, beneficial. And uh, I try to keep my wrist bending with the brush because if I if I don't, the bristles will slap this stuff all over the place, all over the sides of the trim trim board. I don't really want it on there because uh, I'm going to paint that again. And then when I do the deck, I, I come over, I cut in first on the stair tread. And then I work it back. And you go with the grain, so you want to make sure that you, uh, you're doing plenty of brushing it in. You want to brush it into the grain the best results. So, this stuff is really great compared to the old polyurethane that used to go on uh, with stink, would stink for days. And um, this stuff will be dry in a couple of hours. I'll be walking on it. So that's a bonus. And it's really easy to work with. And it's water and soap cleanup. So it makes my, you know, my brush a lot easier. And you can see that you want to make sure you really uh, brush it in because that's the secret. Brushing it in and you can see the results. See where it's where I stopped and where I finished. So we're getting a nice product here because it's uh, really coming out nice. I don't think the, the lighting here does it justice, but it looks beautiful here and live anyway. So here we are. There's the finished product. There's the steps. They had the second coat of the polycritic on it. So they're, they are looking really good. And it's dry in no time at all. Um, two hours between coats so this has been a few hours now and uh, all I got left to do is attack the carpet on the top I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and I'll finish that I don't want to uh, work on it yet I'm going to let it dry overnight and then I'll attack that carpet back over the, that top baseboard and uh, as a finished product. So that's how you take a nasty carpet and you put these beautiful oak steps in. And what a difference it makes.